Hey guys, and welcome back to another Rocket League Mechanics video. Since so many of you seem to like my last Arrow video, I figured it was about time I gave you all my complete guide to show you exactly how to go from zero to hero when it comes to Arrow Link. Before I get into this though, as usual, I want to shout out the 5% of you all watching right now that are actually subbed to the channel. In all seriousness though guys, if you have seen any of my other videos before or found my content helpful, really the best way to support me besides joining my Patreon or something like that is literally by just clicking that subscribe button. We're on the road to hit 100k by the end of January and it would be honestly amazing if we got there, so if you could help me out and click that sub button if you find this video helpful, it would mean a lot. Anyways though guys, without any further wait, let's talk about how to learn air roll in Rocket League. Okay guys, before we get into any of the details, I have to start with a disclaimer, and that's that learning air roll is not like learning any other mechanic in Rocket League. You see, with other mechanics like half flips or speed flips, you can just drill away, and even if it's a tough learning process, eventually you're probably gonna get it. The thing about air roll though, is it's not really hard mechanically, right? Air rolling in and of itself is easy. You just hold down whatever button you have for air roll, and your car spins. The problem here though, lies in the fact that air rolling at any given time is gonna do something different based on where your car is facing, right? With half flips, you learn the set of inputs and you've got it. But with air roll, the difficulty is more in applying what you know rather than just doing it. Okay, but why am I saying all of this? Point is, if you wanna learn air roll the fastest, you're going to have to learn how to apply it step by step. So bear with me here as I break down each step to learning air roll. Okay, first we're going to start with what I like to call step zero, and that is keybinds. The reason I call this step zero is because you really have to have it down before you even get started learning the mechanic, right? Because the fact is, before you can begin to learn air roll, you really want to get a good set of keybinds picked out. After all, the last thing you want to have to do is go back and relearn everything down the road if you realize your keybinds are bad. Okay, but when it comes to keybinds for air rolling, I know there is some disagreement in the Rocket League community about what exactly you need to have. And I talk about this topic a lot in some of my other settings videos, but the quick summary for the purposes of this video is that in my opinion, you should have both a directional air roll and a regular air roll bind. Now, the reason I say this is because each bind has their perks based on what exactly you're trying to do. So for example, in the air, having a directional arrow bind is nice because it will enable you to tornado spin, which we'll talk about more in a second here, but tornado spinning is very useful in certain high level mechanics like flip resets. On the other hand, having a generic arrow bind is also nice for things like wave dashes, recoveries, and half flips, especially if you use the trick that I mentioned in my other videos, which is mapping your generic arrow and power slide to the same button. Now, like I said, I'm not going to go too in depth with any of these tricks here, but bottom line is, if you're just getting started learning air roll, I highly suggest you find a button you like for both air roll left or air roll right, you don't really need both, and a separate button for regular air roll as well. This way, you don't have to worry about having to relearn stuff later like I unfortunately had to do a few months back. Okay, once you've got your settings figured out though, how do you actually start to learn air roll? Well, before we get into anything like continuously spinning, we have to start with the basics. Now, odds are many of you watching right now will probably just look like this if you ever tried an aerial car control map, right? Without air roll, all you can really do is this awkward tilting of your car, and to say the least, it's less than ideal. Now, if we go back to air rolling, the real perk of this mechanic is it allows you to adjust your car fluidly while in the air. So no matter what, instead of having to deal with this awkward pitching of your car, air rolling is going to allow you to change direction no matter where you're facing. To actually be able to do this though, we need to understand the difference between plain air roll and tornado spinning. So let's start with that. So to pull off a tornado spin here, you can see I'm just holding my air roll left button and pushing my joystick over to the right. Now, the reason tornado spinning is useful is because of this joystick movement, because not only is the direction of my hood spinning, right, but my car is actually changing the way it's facing. 
In other words, if I held down boost, I'd be going in different directions throughout the tornado spin. Whereas with just plain air rolling, you're only going to go in a straight line when you hold down air roll. To illustrate this, I'm going to show a useful visual here that I showed in my last air roll video, and you can really see the main difference here. If you look closely, plain air roll doesn't actually change the direction my car is heading, right? If I boost while using air roll, I'm just going to fly in one direction and the hood of my car might be spinning, but the actual car itself is going one way. With tornado spinning, however, the direction you face changes throughout the spin. So if you tornado spin 180 degrees, for example, you can turn around and boost right back to the starting point of your aerial. Now, I'm not going to obsess over the details of how this is actually happening here because I talk about this in one of my other videos, but point is we're going to try to take advantage of this unique aspect of tornado spinning to help make adjustments while we're air rolling. So without any further ado, now that we're four minutes into our video, let's actually go to step one of learning air roll. Okay, on to step number one of learning air roll, and we have the individual adjustments, right? The question is, how do we use air roll to turn left versus how do we use air roll to turn right? Okay, the way I'm going to explain this applies to all of you with an air roll left bind. But if you're an air roll rider, just flip everything I say around. Anyways, the adjustment to turn left is as follows. Hold down your air roll left button and push your joystick down and to the right for the duration of one spin. If you do this right, your car will end up in the exact same position it started, just a little to the left. Now, the same way that we turned left, to turn right, all we're going to do is change the direction we push our joystick. So here, still hold down arrow left, but now to turn right, we're gonna push our joystick up and to the right. If you do this correctly, your car will end up a little to the right of where you started. And I know I've already done a lot of rambling this video, but really, that is the core of what you need to know to air roll left or right. In all seriousness, just knowing this, how to turn left versus how to turn right, is the core, is the fundamental, is the most important part of learning air roll. And going forward, everything I'm gonna talk about is going to be built on this one step. So make sure you can do this basic adjustment left and right before moving on to these next steps. Okay, but once you've got this first step down, we're going to move on to step two, and that is practicing these adjustments in flight. Now, there are many ways to practice these adjustments, and you could just practice flying from goal to goal in free play like a lot of other YouTubers say, but in my opinion, there's only one real best way to practice these adjustments, and it's in a rings map. So let's head over to rings and talk about these adjustments. Okay, now that I'm in a workshop map here, we can talk about these adjustments. And the way you're going to want to start practicing these air roll adjustments is by doing something that I like to call intentionally putting yourself out of line. So for example, in this first course of Lethemir's rings here, what I would want you to do to intentionally put yourself out of line is fly up to one of the rings and put yourself a little outside the ring, whether that's to the left or to the right. Then what you wanna do is use an adjustment to move your car over and fly through the ring. Now, if you can see where I'm going on the next ring, what we're gonna do is fly to the other side and do the same thing, try to adjust and make it through the ring. If it helps you, you can just practice adjusting one way over and over again, and feel free to redo levels more than once. But the idea here is we're just trying to practice moving our car left or right based on what we need to do in game. So really try to get this down here. So like with the previous step, really try to hone in on this before moving on to the next one. Now I'm going to go over more tips and common mistakes later, but one extra thing to be keeping in mind here while you're doing these adjustments is remember the adjustment starts when you see the hood of your car. So really be thinking about the way your car is facing before you try to adjust left or right. As you can imagine, step two is going to be incorporating double or triple spins. Now, if you see where I'm going, we're trying to build up the foundation here, and incrementally, we're moving closer and closer to being able to continuously spin. So just like with step one, for step two, I want you to intentionally put yourself out of line, but instead of spinning only once to correct yourself, do that same correction, but hold down air roll a little longer after you're finished. Now, bear in mind when you're going through these steps, you're definitely going to have what are called blackout moments, where you just completely blank and don't know what to do with your car. 
The idea here though, is we are slowly pushing ourselves further and further to incrementally improve. So really be patient here, don't get frustrated if you have blackout moments, and expect some failure, because you can't learn to fix these mistakes until you make them yourselves. And I really mean it when I say that, so try to have patience and it will pay off in the long run. Okay, on to step three, and now we are just going to send it and hold air roll down continuously. After you can make a couple consecutive spins and you're really starting to get comfortable, this is when it's time to just go for it and really force yourself to mess up. Just like the other steps, this step will be hard and you're going to inevitably mess up here. But if you followed along with me up to this point, you should be incrementally improving. But trust me, forcing yourself to have these little failures and moving up step by step is really the fastest way to go about learning this mechanic. And once you have steps zero through three down, guys, this is really going to be all you need to know to learn air roll. Now, that being said, there are going to be some common pitfalls people make along the way while trying to go through these steps. So here, I thought I'd go over some common mistakes I see with people learning air roll, and I'm going to try to give some tips to make sure you're learning this the right way. Okay, so starting with the list of common mistakes I see people make, tip number one is going to be remember where the adjustment starts. I know I briefly mentioned this earlier, guys, but when you're just learning, I really do believe it's important to try to simplify everything that's going on. And the best way to simplify this mechanic is to really focus on the direction your car is facing. Now, since I've been air rolling for a while, I can trust my mechanics and muscle memory to adjust my car from any position. But trust me, while you're still in the learning process, you really wanna focus on paying attention to where that adjustment starts. So when you see your car facing forward, when you see the front of your car, that's when you want to start the adjustment. And if you do this, I promise everything will become so, so much easier. Tip number two is to remember that to change directions, you really never need to push your joystick with the direction of your air roll. As we saw earlier, turning left and right with air roll can all be accomplished by pushing your joystick up and to the right or down and to the right if you're using air roll left. So for starters, try to keep your joystick always facing that opposite direction of your air roll and you should find yourself having way less blackout moments this way. Okay, on to tip number three and that is remember which way you're boosting. Now, I know this is kind of a redundant tip, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier when I was talking about tornado spins, but remember, boosting itself is the actual force that makes your car change direction. So don't only forget, it's not only changing the direction of your car to go that way, it's changing the direction of your car and then actually pushing down boost as well to get there. So while you have all these other things in your head, make sure you don't forget that. My final tip, tip number four, is a little bit of a two-in-one, and it's be patient. Like I said earlier, jumping into rings and holding down air roll just isn't going to get you very far. If you wanna learn fast, you really have to show patience and take this step by step. Now, the thing that goes kind of hand in hand with this tip is don't always hold down air roll when you don't need to. For starters, prioritize only holding down air roll on the individual adjustments, and really don't expect to freestyle straight out of the gates. Now, when I say that, I don't mean don't challenge yourself, right? I want you to have blackout moments, and it's important to have blackout moments to learn. All I'm saying is, don't think you have to hold down air roll for every situation. There are a lot of cases where you might already have a good line set up to the ball, and you might see pros air roll in these cases, but if you don't need to, then don't worry about being flashy when you're just starting. Bottom line is, guys, don't worry about being flashy until you've really got it down, and trust me, it will be clear when you get to that point. But all right, guys, that is really everything I think you need to know to learn how to air roll in Rocket League. Now, I could go on and tell you all the different ways air rolling is useful in games, whether it's just with air rolling, with flip resets, with air dribbles, with double taps, with all these other mechanics. But the point of this video was just to get that car control piece down, and then you can tinker with it and whatever mechanics that you want later on. In terms of my favorite training packs and workshop maps though, I'll comment down below with a list of some of my favorites, but just for the purposes of the video and the narration here, I'll list my top three favorite workshop maps in order. And these are going to be Speed Jump Rings 2 by DMC, 
Lathomir's Rings, and then hardest, but most fun in my opinion, being Speed Jump Rings 3 by DMC. So definitely check out these maps if you want to spice up your practice. Okay guys, I know there were a lot of moving parts here, but I really tried to condense this guide down as much as I could to only the essentials you really need to know. That being said, if you're interested in learning more about any of these topics like settings or other aerial tricks, I'll make sure to link more videos on screen by me that you can check out afterwards. But regardless, I hope this video was helpful to you all in figuring out how to get started aeroling, and definitely let me know if you have any questions or anything else you want to hear about the topic of aeroling from me in the comments down below. One last thing before the video ends though, if you're new to the channel and don't know about the monthly giveaway I do, then this is the part of the video where I'll talk more about that. Basically, at the end of every month, I pick a random subscriber to win two months worth of free private coaching for me. Now, normally I only coach my Patreon members, but if you get picked, I'll coach you for four sessions over a span of two months, completely free of charge. So if you wanna enter for a chance to win that, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and join my Discord because I pick the winner over there. Anyways though guys, that's all I've got for this one. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace guys.